So the heat is like our, our gas pedal, uh, so that regulation of how fast things go. And then the solar radiation is our fuel or our gas. Hi, and welcome back to another agronomic update here in North Central Iowa. I'm Phil Long, regional agronomist with Liquid Grow, talking about cooler temperatures and how it impacts corn growth. So we're looking at a, a week or a week to 10 days of cooler than average temperatures uh, and a pretty good magnitude of about 10, 10 to 15 degrees below average. Feels really great outside right now, uh, but we're gonna talk about how that impacts the corn plant and how it's growing. So I wanna relate this to an engine or a motor because I like to relate to things. Uh, we talk about corn in terms of a factory, same kind of deal, but let's think about it in terms of an engine or a motor. So the two ingredients I'm gonna give you today are heat and solar radiation. So the heat is like our, our gas pedal, regulation of how fast things go, and then the solar radiation is our fuel or our gas. So those two things are, are big drivers in how quickly the corn plant moves through stages. We talk a lot about GDU accumulation, growing degree units, and when we calculate that, we use 50 and 86. So what do those mean? Those are kind of the top and the bottom temperatures of when photosynthesis is, is working, how efficiently it's working. So 86 is the top. Much above that, into the 90s, uh, things are going to kind of slow down and start to go backwards because the pl plant is expending a lot of energy to respire and stay cool. Uh, below 50, obviously, there's not a lot happening in terms of photosynthesis either. Things are just really slow. Uh, so that's kind of ideal. Or we could say, you know, an 80, 85 degree day and a 65 degree night would be ideal. I'd let the plant recover at night, move those sugars into the ear, into the roots and other parts that are growing and during the day it's making the best use of that photosynthesis so that would be ideal what are we looking at for the next seven to ten days well 10 to 15 degrees below average so what happens to the corn plant well it slows things down that heat isn't there we're backing off on that throttle that fuel pedal so we're slowing the corn plant down that means it spends more time in reproduction more time in the phase that it's in right now which is approaching r4 this one's a little behind this one's uh, more like uh, the blister stage but a lot of our corn around here is r3 to r4 so milk to to dough stage so it spends a little more time in that and it takes a little bit more time to get to uh, uh, black layer or maturity uh, typically this is a good thing we talk, talk about this in terms of fungicides and other stress reducing things that we can do to the corn plant because it's helping it spend more time in reproduction. So, should we be looking for a yield bump? Well, I'm gonna give you a caveat, and the caveat is solar radiation. That's the gas, like I mentioned, the fuel that keeps the thing going. Without that, we're not doing much. If you look at the photosynthesis equation, we, we have carbon dioxide and water, and what drives that is the solar radiation. So if we don't have solar radiation, we're not getting sugar and oxygen out of that photosynthesis. So the plant can't do what it needs to at night or during the day. Uh, so that solar radiation is critical. University of Nebraska Lincoln did a study with a, a simulation showing that uh, if you reduce the solar radiation by 46% over a seven day window consecutively, that you could see a 5% reduction in yield. Now, what does that mean? Consecutive days, 46%. Well, I'm gonna give you something to relate it to. So if we're looking at a dreary overcast day, a little rainy and whatnot, pretty cloudy, that's gonna be about 60% reduction in active radiation or radiation coming down from the sun. I also wanna mention smoke, because a lot of people ask about that. Smoke is not near as much as you think. It's on, the, uh, on average zero to, to 20 or 30% at max. I think in our area, it'd probably be more of zero to 15% because there's a lot of factors that play into it, but it can actually reflect light, which can be a good thing. Uh, but there's just a lot of factors that play into the smoke equation, but it's not as big of a deal, especially even in terms of a partly cloudy day. That's gonna slow down that solar radiation more so than smoke will to affect the yield. So two factors there, heat and solar radiation. I think if we saw both of those together, which we're likely not gonna see right now, we're not seeing it, um, it's cooler, uh, but, that sun is out and it's, it's radiating on the leaves nice and strong. So if we see good sunny conditions, basically what we're gonna see is spending more time in grain fill, which is a good thing. Uh, may not be enough to notice. I think at this point we're about 80 GDUs ahead. So we're probably gonna even out in terms of GDUs, slow it down a little bit, take a little more time to get to maturity, uh, but it's not gonna be enough given we're a little bit ahead in GDUs anyway, uh, as long as we keep getting uh, radiation from the sun. So. 
Moral of the story is uh, enjoy this cooler temperatures in August. It's a beautiful day out. It's going to be for several days now. Enjoy the temperatures. The corn's going to keep growing as long as it has that sun going uh, and, and there won't be anything to worry about uh, in terms of yield. So thanks for watching this week's video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.